All right, so we talked about how to apply and moving on to the next step, you're successful, yay, congrats. The next part is the recruiter screen. 98% of the time, once you kind of pass that resume screening, you will get contacted by a recruiter and they will ask you to schedule a call with them. So this is kind of like the first formal-ish um, interview step. It's nothing too serious. It's just more for the recruiter to get to know you, to see if this will be a good fit for you. Also so that they can explain to you what the job entails, what the team is like, what the company's like, and what this whole interview process is gonna look like because it will differ by company to company. So I created a whole video about how to ace your recruiter screen. So if you are interested, please take a look here. So after the recruiter screen, if the recruiter deems you to be a good fit for the role, they'll move you forward to the next round. And most of the times the next round would be a phone screen. So in this phone screen, it will likely be a technical interview. It's not 100% of the time it will be technical, but very, very high chances it's gonna be a technical interview. And there will be maybe like one to three questions depending on the company. So based on kind of my experiences interviewing at various companies, a lot of companies like to ask these algorithm lead code type questions. What will happen is like you'll hop on a call with your interviewer. You will have like kind of this interactive um, coding screen. So they will send you like a link. You'll go in and it's basically kind of a place where you can write your code. Um, some companies will give you a link where it compiles. Some companies um, will just make you write it in like basically like a notepad or a Google Doc. So it will depend. So your syntax might not be cleaned up. So just keep that in mind. But you'll have some kind of place to write your code and they will give you a question and you just have to like write your code. Sometimes they might want it to run perfectly. Sometimes they just want to see if your logic is correct. That is totally dependent on the company, but I think it's safe to assume that a good chunk of the time they will give you access to something that will run your code and they will try to run your code once you write it to check if you have solve the problem correctly or not. So as I mentioned earlier, um, a lot of times it's like these like leak code algorithm like questions. But recently I've seen a lot of companies actually ask um, questions that are more specific to the actual role you're applying for and not just generic leak code questions. So for instance, I'm a UI engineer and I have seen a good handful amount of companies during the phone screen ask me specific JavaScript or uh, React questions instead of these leak code-esque questions. Um, and also they might throw you some trivia questions and some behavioral questions during the phone screen as well. So make sure that doesn't surprise you when uh, you're asked those questions. And generally after the phone screen, if you're successful, um, they will call you on to onsite. So there might be one or two more interviews in between. There might be a hiring manager call where you're on a call with the hiring manager just to talk about the team and the job and to see if you would be a good fit for each other. There might be another phone screen. This like totally depends on the company and like how well you're doing in this interview process. But generally after the phone screen, it'll be an onsite. And before the pandemic, they would actually fly you into their office. But um, nowadays, most of them are remote. Some companies, because of Zoom fatigue, they'll try to split out these on-site into two things so that you're not like just staring into your computer screen for like six, seven hours. But who knows how the future of these on-sites will change too. I still think that they will try to fly you in so that the team can get to meet you and you get to meet the team because it's still very different meeting someone person to person versus just off a screen, but we'll see. Anyways, for these on-sites, think a minimum or four hours, so four sessions or up to like seven hours or seven, seven different interview sessions. And I know that's a lot and it's very, very draining. So when I'm doing interviews as well, like I know that it's going to be such a long and like, you know, it's a process that I dread. It's not something that I have fun with, but this will be your final step. So hang in there. As I've mentioned before, each company will differ, but uh, most of the companies will have some technical interviews and some behavioral interview sessions. So for these technical interviews, it can range anywhere from these algorithm questions again, like these lead code questions. It could also be problem solving questions. So they might give you like a vague problem. Let's say we're trying to build like this. 
talk to me about your thought process, what you need to do if you need to build this. If you're like leading this feature, what would you do? So a problem solving question like that, it could be like an architecture question, it could be a systems design question, or even like a product design question based on what kind of role you're applying for and what kind of company you're applying for. And for the behavioral interview, you will almost most definitely have an interview with your hiring manager because at the end of the day, they are likely going to be one of the biggest decision makers in terms of if you're going to get hired on the team or not. There also might be a director level interview. You might be talking to some designers or product managers, or also you might have sessions with the back-end engineering partner equivalent or the front-end engineering manager equivalent. It all depends on the company, but I'm kind of listing out these things as a possibility of what you might run into. So when you're prepping for on-site, even before going into your phone screen, don't just prep the technical part. I know that's what a lot of the focus goes into, but make sure you give the behavioral questions some love too, because you could do really, really, really well on your technical interviews, but if your behavioral interviews don't go well, the chances of you getting hired will drop significantly. If you're thinking about this in the hiring manager's perspective, if you're trying to hire someone on your team, of course you want someone that's good and skilled and that will perform their job. But you also want someone that's a good team player. You also want someone that is going to synergize well with your teams. And also, they only have a couple of hours to understand what kind of person you are. And so this behavioral session is very important so that you can kind of showcase what an amazing human being you are. And that's basically it. So for me, kind of interviewing as a software engineer or like going through this whole process as a software engineer, when I learned about it for the first time, I thought it was very unique. At first, when I heard on sites for six, seven hours, I thought that was ridiculous, but I've been through a good handful of them myself, it's like these on sites, and it's like really a thing. And you want to make sure you know what to expect going into these interviews. But yeah, so to kind of give a quick summary, you apply for the job, um, there are many different ways of applying to a position, um, and then there's a recruiter screen, phone screen, and then on-site that can range from technical questions to behavioral questions. I hope this video was helpful in terms of describing what the whole interview and application process looks like for a software engineer for these tech companies. If you have any specific questions or if you'd like to see any kind of videos diving into more details of any of these processes that I've described, please let me know in the comments below. Well, hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe and I will see you in my next one. Bye.